We're about to go live and we're going to have live session with dinner because I haven't done my dinner yet. Just want to check my microphone, by the way. Check, check, check. Mic test, one, two, three. Mic test, one, two, three. Good evening, gladiators in suits. It's been a while. I think I haven't gone live for two weeks. That's because work has been really so busy. We've had too many clients, which, by the way, is a happy problem. And so every time I've gone back home, I'd be so tired. So I said, should I go live? Mm, I don't think I'll be able to go live. And I will not be able to give the best version of myself as well. Okay. So what is, sorry, I'm using my chopsticks because I'm going to be doing, uh, I'm going to be having my dinner. Topic for tonight is something that I thought of this morning while showering. And that is, we're finally back in the normal setting, I'd like to think. I think the pandemic is over. However, a lot of us have been permanently working from home, or at least now in hybrid mode, meaning many of us are now working for certain days of the week in the office and then certain days of the week at home. So I'd like to probe, do a debate and discussion. Are you okay with this arrangement? Are you happy with it? Or are you now 100% back in the office and how you wish that your company would still allow you to work from home? Okay, so you're going to have that discussion for this evening. Melo Pagayon is saying from Facebook, nakakamis po yung virtual event nyo kay MI. Uh, Melo, could you please let me know which company is this? I might have forgotten what MI stands for. So let's do an attendance check. We have folks, we have Melo, Kat, Costiniano, Jason, Nancy, uh, Abdul Karim A, watching from Doha, Qatar. Thank you. Uh, you guys are four hours away, right? Mylene also. Etelinda. Al Prince. We also have some folks here on TikTok. Thank you for joining us. So if you notice, our topic for today's session is, do you prefer working from home or working on site? Or do you prefer a mix of both? Okay. I'm... I'm going to say this off the bat. I'm the type who prefers both. I would love to have an arrangement wherein I'm working, let's say, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, working from home. And then Thursday, Friday, I will be required to go to the office. Because as someone who has tasted both, so now I'm an entrepreneur, I do not anymore keep an office because majority of our events have gone live once again. And I don't really go to the office, even if I keep an office. So it's just a waste of money at the end of the day. But it does get lonely for certain days. It does get boring when you're stuck at home, even if you have bazillions of emails to check. It's different when you have this concept of noise from your seatmate, looking forward to the food from the canteen or the pantry, um, Perks such as free coffee, simple things such as swiping your ID. Kind of miss that. So it will be great to have both. Okay. But I'd like to know your thoughts. What, which do you prefer? Which regime? Do you prefer working from home, working on site? So you can share your thoughts. You can also, as usual, share questions about your career. So remember, we're not going to limit your questions only about working on site or working from home. Anything that involves your career issues, it could be quitting your job, conflict with your manager, asking tips for a job interview, we'll be very happy to answer them. So just type them in the chat box and one by one, we'll find a way to answer them. Okay. Um, Maria Luisa Camacho from Facebook is saying, work from home four times and once a week is fine. I'm also okay with that. Right? So I'm from Metro Manila and obviously when traffic is so bad... Uh, spending two hours a day is such an investment, both a mental investment, physical investment, and because there is such a thing as grab surge, I think that it, you know, it's easy to spend 500 to 1,000 pesos per day if you're dependent on grab, right? I, on, during my younger years, I would drive. I would drive, but as I grew older and because I'm now dependent as an entrepreneur with my talks, I decided not to drive. So either I have a driver or I would take a grab. 
Why is that? Here's my point. Hear me out. I think driving is not driving. Driving is most of the time parking. And so you end up spending sometimes 30 minutes looking for a parking spot. It irritates you. It eats up your time. And by the time that you have been irritated, it changes your mood. The moment I go on stage and to do a motivational talk, sometimes some of my clients would tell me, John, I've noticed that you're not in a good mood. Are you okay? And every time a client tells me that, I realize, gosh, I cannot be the one driving. It has to be someone driving for me. So I switched. I changed things. By the way, this is my dog. For folks on TikTok, you'll be able to see my dog, uh, Tanjiro, here. For folks who are on Facebook, let, okay, let, let's show also Tanjiro here because he wants to be on, this guy wants to be on camera, right? Oh, Tanji, come up. Show yourself tonight because you know that I'm on live and therefore you want to show yourself to the rest of the world. Oh, come on. Camera's here. Tanji, camera's here. Mm. Oh, Ayan. Uh, you're, you're visible now on camera. See, he just finished his dinner, by the way. <laughs> Say hello. Oh, you're okay now? You got your dose now, Fana? Huh? You got your dose now? Hmm. Oh, sige. Oh, wants to go down now. Okay, so Gladiators and Suze, is it uh, cool to hit now your questions? Okay, I'm going to call this comment from LinkedIn, from Noor Shamiza. And she says, I've experienced working from home and it's extremely overwhelming. Hopefully, I can do hybrid work afterwards. Maybe hybrid was okay for me depending on the work environment. I do think that hybrid work can depend on your age, your lifestyle, but I think it's been proven. There are a lot of studies. Iceland and New Zealand had a lot of studies about this. When you make people work only four days a week in the office and one a week at home, or you even eliminate Friday as a working day, you make Friday as part of the three-day weekend, people remain to be productive. That's one. So meaning it didn't lead to people losing time in accomplishing work. It didn't lead to people becoming lazier, but it also increased significantly their level of happiness and satisfaction. So there is a strong scientific basis for saying that people uh, lives, that the quality of your life can be better when you're able to work from home. Okay. Siva from LinkedIn says, both are good according to the situation. I agree. So it's really case-to-case -case basis. There are certain industries like, you know, if you need to be on site like an engineer and you definitely cannot work remotely, you really have to commit being on site. I do think that marketing and sales to a certain extent, there are certain discussions that can be best fleshed out when you get to see the person face to face. That even if you can talk to each other via Zoom, there are going to be such, this is just me, but I think that creativity is not as optimized when you don't get to see the person face to face. An example of that is sometimes when I'm in the office and I'm walking along the corridor, and I get to bump into someone at the elevator or I bump into someone at the pantry and then someone raises an idea and then I build on the idea and then someone builds on my idea. Those things don't happen anymore in virtual settings. But because you're face-to-face, -face, you can easily nudge people. I think that there are amazing ideas that can come about only because you get to see the person physically. I think which we call as positive friction. Those things are minimized when you make everyone work from home. Okay? Those are my thoughts. How about you guys? Let me know what are your thoughts about it. James from LinkedIn says this, working from home option saves a lot of bucks, a lot of money from commuting. I agree. Gas, lunch, and oh, that's true. Lunch allowance. I have to say this. When you have to work from, from an office and you happen to be working in a business district, you have no choice but to buy expensive food from the restaurants, from the uh, establishments, unless you have a company that subsidizes the food. And not all companies do that, by the way. You are required to spend 200 pesos, 300, 
in BJC where I live, it's so normal to pay things 500 pesos. That's around 10 US dollars uh, for lunch. That doesn't even have a drink. That doesn't have yet your coffee, for example. I so agree with you, James. James also says, I have been working remotely since the pandemic, but there are times that we are required to work on site when there are important town hall meetings or team activities to add. So this is what I've been noticing for certain companies. They require their employees only during special gatherings. And sometimes they also do this quarterly or every month just so that there are scheduled meetups and that people don't end up uh, randomly just coming into the office and then someone misses another person. By the way, I'm just looking at my shirt on TikTok. I think folks on TikTok are going to notice and going to call me out. Yes, I'm going to say this now. This shirt is not ironed at all. So I'm sorry for that. I just had to wear something decent and nice in front of you because it's my bedtime. But I can't just wear a sando or be topless in this seminar, in this uh, live session. So, yeah. Because someone on TikTok says, Sir, hahabuli na po kayo ng plancha. In English, Sir, the iron is starting is going to chase you soon. So, yes, thank you, but I have no other choice. I don't have time to iron my clothes just for this session. Christian from TikTok says, we work on site three times a week. That's a good number. For me, four is to one or three is to two is a good number. Uh, I would prefer that everyone is in the office at the same time on a certain day. There are companies, by the way, where in their situation is, Batch 1, Monday to Tuesday. Batch 2, Wednesday to Friday. So I don't like this arrangement because if you happen to miss out a person who belongs in Batch B and you happen to come from Batch A, it defeats the purpose of being in the office because you will end up doing a Zoom or Microsoft Teams call with the person still, even if you are in the office. Plus, if you're going to be asking people to go already anyway, might as well just make them go to a certain time it makes the company save on costs because you are assured that the air conditioning, the electricity is only turned on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you get to rest it, right? Um, Suno for, from TikTok says, working from home every Monday and Friday and the rest of the week on site. Ooh, that's another arrangement. So it's both the corners, the Monday and the Friday. DJ Maghanoy from TikTok says, any work-from-home companies' recommendations to start with as part-time job currently working in logistics? Oh, whoever can share and relate to DJ, please share your info. By the way, I've noticed this. A lot of companies have been saying, you know, we, we work with a lot of HR folks. And a lot of them tell me, John, it's so hard to look for the right applicants these days because a lot of them are so picky. A lot of them are so choosy. Every time they go for a job interview, the first thing that they will ask is, is this work from home or is there an option to be work from home? And the moment they found I, find, find out that it's not a work from home situation, they just ghost on us. They don't even say that they are proceeding with the interview anymore. I also noticed this on Job Street on LinkedIn. If you notice, gladiators in suits, companies these days now include information after the position, it says they're working on site or virtual job. Just so they get to filter already which applicants are willing to apply for that job. Okay. Well, I like this. I like this statement from uh, Ben Ten on TikTok. He says, We are encouraged to do purposeful returns, whatever that means, which includes celebrations or meetings, etc. Uh, D. Martz is a talent sourcing specialist and he says, yes, Jonathan, it's hard to recruit these days. It's really a perk, unfortunately, especially the younger the applicant is, if they come from the Generation Z or a younger Generation Y. If you're not giving a work-from-home option, a lot of them think that they can just pass on the opportunity because there are others who are willing to give that opportunity. Right? Um... Marco Christine from LinkedIn says, uh, from Facebook says, hopeful for work from home setup, but it's been eight years since I'm working in the corporate world that requires 
field work. I'm scared finding jobs in work from home setup. It will be beneficial since I will be married soon. Okay? You know, sometimes it's going to be hard if the adjustment will require you to change your mindset and your behavior. So I'll give you an example. When I was in a telecommunications company, I was five days a week working in the office. When I went to the pharmaceutical industry and I stayed there for four years, I worked for GlaxoSmithKline. So hello if there's anyone from pharma, um, which I think is one of the most amazing industries in the world, most generous industry in the world. I really had to adjust because uh, two days a month, we were required to be on field. And then two to four days a month, we will be required to go to events. And there are certain months of the year in which almost every night, we have to join a doctor for dinner to ask for insights and to attend scientific meetings and uh, seminars. So I had to get used to it because I wasn't comfortable with driving too often. I was always stuck in traffic. And I also gained a lot of weight that time because there was so much eating involved when you're on the field. So if you were to ask me if I were to choose between working in the office or working on the field, I would choose to be in the office. I like the comforts of air conditioning. I like the comforts of uh, free coffee and just the predictability that my cubicle is there, my laptop is there, there's stable internet connection, all these things. Okay. Um, John says also on LinkedIn, for me, personal interaction is still required and is a must. This shows leadership, responsibilities, ownership, and teamwork. But as long as one or the team has good scheduling and organization of their task, at least once or twice a week for me, I need to do site or office-based work. I agree. I, I'm an extrovert. I just can't spend an entire day without talking to someone or without releasing my energy with someone. I, I know. I, I, it's just not mentally good for me. So I, I so feel you, John, for this statement. And John continues and says, all organizations must measure one's performance, not just attendance. Also, thank you for calling this out. I think the problem with some companies is that they often equate that attendance on site is equal to commitment and performance at work, which isn't true at all. I've proven this time and time again, you can have amazing employees who can work from home and their productivity is even boost. It even gets boost uh, 10 times, 15 times, right? Versus when someone is in the office. So hear me out. Sometimes you can also be lazier in the office. Why is that? You're beside your teammates. By 2 o'clock or 4 o'clock p.m., when you all start to become sleepy after lunch because you've had so much rice for lunch, you end up talking about your latest celebrity gossip or uh, talk of the town news. And so for 30 minutes or one hour or cumulatively for two to three hours while working, you end up doing unproductive tasks. Versus when you're in the comforts of your home, you probably have more ability to focus. But then again, this is my issue. When I'm working from home, the television is in front of me and I can open my Netflix anytime. Right, So again, it's not an absolutist answer. You can always have both. It's, it will really depend on your personality, on your discipline, and your environment. Right. Okay, let's cover a question that may not be related to the topic. So let's, make, let's cover a career question. From Jewelson, who happens to be here all the time for our questions. Jewelson says, John, which is better? micromanaging employees in the workplace or a software system installed in the office? Oh, it's, it's a work from home related question, by the way. So th thank you. Is it better to micromanage employees in the office or should I just install a software in their laptops to monitor their activities while working from home? I think there is no difference. So what's the big deal? Okay. Two things. One, Beyond this question, I'm a believer that if you have an amazing set of employees because you have an amazing recruiting system, you don't need to monitor your employees in the first place. 
Because if you really had good employees, they will get the job done even if no one is looking behind their backs. Amen. Can I get an exclamation mark from our participants if you agree with that? Because I think when I was younger and I was a high performer, my manager didn't need to know where I was because I was always getting the job done. I was committed. I was passionate. I want to get promoted. And during this time, I wanted to get my own place. I wanted to move out from my parents' house. So I said to myself, in two years' time, I need to get promoted so that I can earn more money and I can eventually uh, afford my own space to rent, which eventually I also did. So that's the first layer. But number two, between two items, it is scientifically proven. And there are a lot of research that shows this, that software installed in laptops to a certain extent do work. So when I say software, the moment the laptop detects that a different browser is being opened or being used by an employee, it gets reported in another software. And you have a report summary that says, what are the websites that this person has opened? So it does work, right? My issue, however, in this case is, number one, you've already sent a message to everyone in the team that I do not trust you. And for that reason, I'm going to do this. So I think you're never going to be in the good footing in the, in the first place. Because that has already you already have that implicit agreement that, hey guys, I know you're not getting your job done, so might as well I do this. So I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I will totally respect organizations who need to do it. Case in point, I think when most of your employees are still relatively young and there's just a lot of them, which is being adopted in call center agencies, for example, I think there's a reason to do it because from an efficiency standpoint, it's better to have everyone monitored. If you're talking about 500, 1,000 employees that need to be monitored, I can totally respect the reason why companies will do this. Okay? But if the person is on site, and again, I don't know, it's a case-to-case -case basis because I've seen situations wherein my direct report is a few meters away from me, but I can't also hover like a helicopter and be at their back the entire time. So I also don't know what they're doing in front of their laptops. Okay? So if I were to rise above the challenge of this question, I would say beyond monitoring, improve your recruitment system. Hire people and try to afford people that you know, without being told what they need to do, they will get the job done and that they can be trusted to get the job done. There. Okay, let's cover some more questions. Let's cover TikTok, folks. Uh, Gandalf on TikTok says the same thing that I mentioned a while ago. Installing software also works, but employees will feel that you have trust issues. Ooh. Um, this one's a non-related question, by the way. This one's on TikTok. This question is from Laos. John, what are your thoughts when a leader tells you that they cannot promote you because you're a threat? My answer, run. <laughs> when I say run, start considering and asking yourself if this is the company you want to work for. The company may be amazing, but this is not going to be the type of leader you want to work for because, again, a great leader will never feel threatened because your success is their success. And the fact that they told this to you deliberately, you know, in front of you, says something that I'm watching you and I'm going to make sure that you will not get promoted also. Sometimes you have no choice because you want to keep your job in the amazing company. So if you can find a way, try to move to a different department or be assigned to the same department, but perhaps if it's allowable to a different team that has a better boss. <clears throat> okay. Can I get an exclamation mark? Are we gathering thoughts so far? Are we enjoying the discussion? Folks on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, could you also please give us um, uh, likes and hearts? Guys, you need to catch up. We got 3,600 likes on TikTok. 
you guys are nothing. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even gonna mention your number because you're really a puny number of likes, right? Mahiya naman kayo kay TikTok. TikTok has three thousand seven hundred likes now, so thank you for that as well. Let's read some more comments, and because of that, because of that, I'm gonna read comments instead <laughs> from TikTok. Because we love TikTok folks more. Ooh, okay. Controversial question. A lot of people ask me this. John, which one do you prefer? External hires or internal hires? Two things. Number one, I think that hiring people outside or within will depend on your objectives for hiring a person. Case in point, if you want to hire, if you want your team to have a fresher set of perspectives, that's one. Number two, if you notice that everyone in the team thinks the same way, if you notice that everyone in the team has been in the company for the past five years, seven years, or ten years, then your objective is to install someone who's coming from a different point of view. That is the situation when hiring someone externally can be to your advantage. Right? Remember, when you hire someone from another company, when you pirate them from another industry. You're not just bringing in the person. You're bringing in together with their talent, their networks, the people that they know. If you're for marketing, they're bringing in their advertising agencies. They're bringing in the makeup artist, the stylist, the cameraman, the production team, the agencies that they knew in their past projects, which might even be way better than your current teams. You're paying them, and relatively with a higher premium, because you're not just paying for a new talent, you're bringing in a set of people and a set of competency that you probably will never have in your life if you stick to the same people in your teams. That is when I think an external hire is merited. Now, when do we say that an internal hire is important? Number one, I think in a lot of leadership positions, internal hires are critical. Why is that? Most people will only respect Someone that they knew has undergone all the hardships and all the challenges of the same company for X numbers of years. They want to listen to someone who understands what the company has been through from its small and humble beginnings down to its current situation. And an internal hire is someone who can boast that uh, functionality. This is why... While some companies get a lot of external hires for innovation purposes, for perspective purposes, hiring someone from within is usually done for hiring vice president positions or uh, C-suite positions as well. Okay? There's also the merit of hiring someone from a different department and rotating them to a different department. So for example... The person is from sales, and then they had to switch him up into marketing or finance. That's also an internal promotion. And usually, you get to benefit because this person is being groomed, perhaps, as a future CEO. It's just a matter of time, and so they want to make this person more holistic in their knowledge of what's happening within the company. Okay? Okay. Kristen says, first time ko naabutan si Sir Nakalive. Thank you for joining our session. Uh, oh, okay. Someone from TikTok, the name is Love Joe, says this. How come that certain top performers are not good leaders? The answer is simple. Technical competency does not translate into behavioral competency. What's the difference? Technical competency is you're good in communication, you write emails fast, you have critical skills, you're very smart, you know how to read emails, you have organizational skills, you're good in science, you're good in math, you're good in English. Those are technical skills. Okay? Behavioral skills, on the other hand, is in times and in situations when you don't like the person, how will you be able to merge partnerships with them? In situations when someone doesn't want to listen to you, how can you win their personality and their hearts? 
Those are behavioral skills. In a party, when you don't know anyone, do you have the ability to talk to a stranger, create a connection, and eventually sell something to them? That's behavioral competency. Okay? Problem is, you may have technical competency, but you don't have the behavioral part of it. And when you become a leader, you need to have the behavioral component intact. Why? Because when you become the leader, you're not the one who's sending the emails anymore. You're not the one who's doing the legwork. You're not the one who is washing the dishes, plugging the appliances, right? Or talking to the customer. You're the one who's instructing people to get this done on your behalf. So you actually need lesser technical competency. You need more of behavioral competency because that means inspiring them to how they should get their job done even if they don't like their job, for example. Okay? This is why I often tell this. If you want to get promoted, do not be confident that you will be promoted just because you're damn good in emails, in PowerPoint, in spreadsheets. If you cannot tick the boxes when it comes to leadership, teamwork, relationships, strategic thinking, all these things, you won't get promoted, especially when the position involves managing people. Okay? Thank you for this question, Love Joe is the name. All right. Let's cover some more. I'm supposed to eat. I'm just going to eat one. I'm just going to get one bite. I hope that's okay, guys, because I haven't eaten dinner yet. I bought some spring rolls. But we're going to check a question here. Oh, Art Neil Fernandez wants to add something from what we discussed. He says, to add to the question a while ago, you do not need to micromanage or monitor your employees. You can always tell by their performance or their KPIs. There's a lot of metrics or data that would tell that they're doing something out of ordinary. Okay, Art Neil, I'm going to agree and I'm also going to disagree. Why is that? If you're only looking at metrics... Usually, you get them at the end of the month. You get metrics at the end of the week or at the end of the year. But you cannot act on them anymore. They're called lags. Lags are statistics wherein, have they met their sales? Have they talked to customers? And if the answer is no, they haven't, 60% call rate, 50% visitation rate to customers. Yes, you will find out that they didn't get the job done, but you could have acted on it easier. You could have acted on it way earlier. So it's important to monitor them before they even make more mistakes. So I guess this is what constant real-time monitoring, why it's important versus only checking on your people at the end of the month or at the end of the year. It's the same thing as what I often say. The problem with a lot of leaders and managers is that they only talk to their people during December or January appraisal evaluation because HR requires it. Which is really sad because by the time that you've asked your employees, how are you doing? How can I help you? They've already tendered their resignation and they're ready to leave. If you want to become an amazing leader, talk to your people on a weekly basis, monthly basis. Ask what their issues are and always have the mindset, how can I enable you? How can I clear the path for you? Okay. Okay, another question here on TikTok. Jan says, How do you deal with leaders who are micromanaging? I think there was a session before where I answered this, but let me repeat it again. There are two reasons why a boss would micromanage you. The first one has something to do with your own fault. And that is remember that it is not the highest interest of a, of a person. To micromanage you. Why? They also have their own lives. It's more believable to think that because you have other things to do, you don't want to add an extra layer of work by micromanaging a person. So it's not in their interest. But what could be the reason why they're micromanaging you instead? Because you have not yet proven that you can get the job done on your own. 
which means for as long as you have not shown consistency to your boss, na pwede kang pabayaan, that you can do things on your own, they will keep on micromanaging you. Because it's also going to be their own concern. If something happens to this project, it's going to be their own fault. So you can just understand why they're also paranoid about their own performance. Okay? This is why I cannot fault all the time if a manager is a micromanager. Sometimes they're also just looking on their own benefit, which isn't bad all the time. Right? If we're talking about multi-million dollar projects, sometimes I can understand why a manager needs to micromanage. Because if you, if you don't prove to him that, they, that you can get the job done, then I will continue guiding and hand-holding and doing things for you. Okay? So that's the first part. So the solution is you have to step up. You have to show that you can do things on your own. Try to get things done beyond what's being asked. Do the extra mile. They're only... I'll give an example. You're being asked to create a database of customers' names and mobile numbers. But you also happen to discover that there's also another document that has their email address. You know what I would do? I'd go the extra mile. You only ask for the name and the mobile number. I will also include a third column, including, because I have time for it, their addresses. And maybe my boss will appreciate it. When you do these small things, you send a message to them that I can go beyond what's being asked because you can trust me because I'm just simply amazing. And the more consistently you do that, the more they will start to let go of you and say, ah, Sheila can do this on her own. She can manage the meeting without me. I don't need to be copied in all emails. I'm going to let her do her own thing. That's when people are, that's when bosses are going to step back. You want to be in that situation. Now, unfortunately, the second type of micromanager is their own shortcomings, their own fault. And that is, they just have trust issues. Unfortunately, some people are going to be unlucky to be assigned with a boss who has a messiah complex. What is a messiah complex? It's the belief that no one else can get the job done but you. So down to the font size, the font type, the colors of a PowerPoint slide, they will dictate. And I know that this is such a, you know, it can piss you off. Right? Right? Ito yung mga boss na, these are the bosses we're in. That's not how you staple a sheet of paper. This is how you do it. Down to that smallest thing. Okay? So my request, if you have this type of boss, there are two ways. Number one, try to take the rough road. Ignore that part and just do your thing. And Hope and pray that you can move on to a different company or be assigned to a different boss. Or number two, you take the painful route but might be an effective route. You talk to that boss. Do a one-on-one, -on -one, heart to heart conversation and say things like, boss, I've noticed that when you ask me to do X, Y, and Z, you also do A, B, and C. But when you do A, B, and C, I feel that you do not trust me and that this also makes me feel disengaged because I know that I have a lot of things to offer. I do not get inspired because of A, B, and C. Is it okay instead? Can we have this arrangement we're in for the rest of the day? I'll do things first on my own, but around 5 or 6 p.m., I will get back to you and report to you should I have other questions. Are you okay with that? You can propose those kinds of arrangements for micromanaging bosses. Because the one thing that micromanaging bosses love to have is a sense of predictability. Okay? That even if I'm not there, I want to know if things are going the way that they should be. Okay? Thank you, Jayan, for that question about micromanagers. Okay, LinkedIn user has this hypothetical question. Okay? When you have two great employees and both of them are great in everything, wow, that's an amazing, right? The only difference, did someone just give me that uh, filter on TikTok? The only difference is that employee one is a pioneer, meaning he's been in the company for the longest time and stayed in the company for five years, while employee two is quite new and is only in the company for one year. Who do you think deserves more promotion? Okay. 
this is me sharing my opinion on criteria for promotion. Number one, while tenure and the number of years is important, at the end of the day, I will consider output as the primary consideration. Because let's face it, you may be 60 years old, but someone who is half your age is just way damn better. Gets things done faster, lesser costs, makes people happy. Why should I promote someone just because they have more years in the company? That is unfair, and it's also blinded. It's also very 1980s, which we need to do away because it's 2023. We're here for merit, not for tenure. So between the two, so here's the case now. The LinkedIn user who sent this says that both of them are great in everything. Okay? So my question first is, why do you have to choose between the two, by the way? Why can't you just promote both of them? Isn't that going to be your issue? Now, okay, let's assume that you really have to choose between the two. If they're both good in the same thing, but one has more years of experience, then if it's an issue of same competency, I'd go for more wisdom and more experience. Why? The person has more exposure to potential mistakes that happened in the past and that they were able to succeed through it. So this is a situation we're in. Tenure is going to be the clincher just because both of them have equal capability. But in another universe, if the issue was one is older, one is younger, but the younger is more experienced, delivers better output, does things way faster and cheaper, I'd promote the younger one still. Okay? No questions asked. And obviously, I need to talk to the older person and explain to them that this isn't about favoring someone unfairly. It's about what's also best for the organization. Here's where you have to tell people that they have to wear a corporate hat. Okay? Mon Saspa says, our chief designer was promoted to his level just after a year. Okay, I think, Mon, I'm not sure if I'm missing out your sentence here, but can you please complete that so we can read it properly? Okay, DCBC on Facebook has this question. question is, is there such a company who cannot promote employees due to budget issue? Yes, a lot. A lot. The reason for that, number one, it's, nor, it's expected that when you promote someone, it also comes with a salary increase. And salary increase is just one aspect of compensation. You also have to improve, for example, coverage of their insurance. For some companies, it has to be improvement of the car plan. For example, when I was working in a telecommunications company, if your managerial or mid-manager level, the car plan given to you was a sedan. But when you're in an executive level, you now get an SUV. So in the spirit of fairness, if the company can't provide these things, they might as well not promote anyone as well. Because everyone's going to end up comparing. Okay? So yes, it happens, unfortunately. Okay. Ooh, lots of questions on TikTok. Let me now cover this. Okay. This one's a very challenging question, so I want to take it on. Question from TikTok. The person has a diamond icon in her name. Hello po. I am replacing somebody. How do I negotiate to my manager to have the same pay that they had? Okay. You will not like my answer for this. But hear me out. First and foremost, just because you are doing the same job, the same projects, and the same number of hours of another person does not automatically mean that you have to have the same pay. And why is that? Because when we evaluate people's merit and their value in terms of money, we also evaluate them in terms of what have they accomplished in the past, what are the new perspectives and skills can they bring to the table that may benefit the company in the future. 
So it's very possible that you can have the same number years of experience, but let's say person C, for, I'll give you an example, two employees, same number of years. They have worked for 15 years. They're working on the same projects. They're delivering the same output. But let's look at the situation we're in. Person B, in those 15 years, he worked in four different other companies, four different industries. A richer level of experience because he was exposed to different problems, different regulations, and different personalities, which makes him more innovative, more resilient, easier to talk to, perhaps more patient because he has been through a lot. And therefore, his value in the company warrants a higher pay because in the future, he can offer better solutions that the company will face. So here's where you cannot all the time say that you should have the same pay as someone else purely on the job description. Okay? I hope you get to appreciate. I know it's not something that you would like. So here's my question now. If you can prove to that manager that your level of skills, competency, and experience and perspectives are the same or even better than the person that you are replacing, then by all means, I think you have a reason to ask for similar pay or even higher pay. Okay? Okay, let's cover another question here. By the way, I want to give away some free tickets, and I think we should do that now. I want to give away some free tickets to our upcoming workshops. This Friday and Saturday, we are conducting them at the SMX Convention Center in SM Aura in Fort PGC. So Friday morning session for three hours is leadership workshop. Afternoon is social media, how to level up your social media marketing. Saturday morning session is boost your confidence, how to speak confidently at work. And then Saturday afternoon, also for three hours, email etiquette and business writing. Because I owe you guys a lot that I haven't been live for two weeks, I want to give away, and because we have a, a lot of seats to spare, I want to give away 10 free tickets. Okay, 10 free tickets to our participants. So we can equally divide maybe three winners, three for Facebook, three for LinkedIn, three for uh, YouTube, and also three for TikTok. Is that okay? Yes? Is that cool? Can I get an exclamation mark in the chat box if you're cool with that? Granted, I'm going to be asking a trivia question. The first 10 folks who get to answer this will win the tickets. And if you happen to win the ticket, please message me. Give me a, send me a private message so we can send to you the instructions on how to claim your prizes. Okay? So let me display that, by the way. I won't be able to display this on TikTok, but on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and YouTube, these are the sessions. Okay, I'm showing it now. There you go. And each ticket is worth 1,799 pesos. Okay, so that's a lot. If what, what am I giving away? I'm giving you an access to attend all four sessions for those two days, okay? Now, if you cannot attend the session, you can give the entry to another person. And last one, because I'm, I'm feeling good. We signed up two clients today, so I'm happy. I'm gonna allow you to bring a plus one in the session because I totally understand sometimes it's lonely to go to a session alone, okay? So you can also bring a plus one for this. You guys are all cool with that? Yes? Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, could you please give me more exclamation marks, more likes? Guys, you guys are lagging. Look at TikTok. TikTok is 11,000 likes. 11,000 likes. You guys are so puny. I deserve more than this. Okay? All right? Okay. So, if you guys are cool, I'm, I'll be asking a question now. Again, first 10 people who will answer this, who gets to answer this. So, 
let's talk about animals because I'm an animal lover. I have a pet dog. You can Google search your answer if you want, but the question is this. Tell me, what do you call the group, this group of species of animals that are known to be mammals, but weirdly are also known for giving their giving offsprings through an egg? Examples of them are the platypus and also echidna. What do you call that group of mammals? You can check that out on Google search. <laughs> wow! TikTok folks, you guys are so quick. Okay? TikTok folks are able to answer it quickly already. Yung iba dyan, gayahan na lang. Di ba? Unfortunately, by the way, sorry. Some people are telling me, John, is this virtual? This is an on-site workshop. So I'm really sorry if you're not from Metro Manila, you will be unable to claim your prize. I'm sorry for that. Because you have to go to SMX Convention Center in Fort BGC in SMORA. Okay? So, the correct... What, I'm so impressed with TikTok, folks. You guys have so many answers. You guys got it correctly. The correct answer, ladies and gentlemen, are what we call as the monotremes. Okay? Monotremes. Mammals are known for giving, uh, giving birth to offspring as live. It's just weird that monotremes hatch their eggs instead. Okay? So... Let me call out the winners, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, the winners. Let me also display the banner first on our. There you go. I'm sharing the. So that folks can understand what we're talking about in terms of the career workshop. So let me call out first the winners on TikTok. My winners are the following. First winner is Brian James. Brian James, congratulations, Brian James. Second winner is Ray Glenn, Ray Glenn Temario. Congratulations, Ray Glenn Temario. Third winner on TikTok, also, the name is Martini, Martini, with the profile picture of a sunset. Okay, congratulations on our TikTok folks. Please send me a DM so that you can claim your prize. And please do it quickly because the session is happening already on Friday and Saturday. 9.30 a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. All the four sessions are happening, two sessions per day. You can attend any of them, and you can also bring a plus one. Okay? Now, for Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, my winners are, let's call them out, yung iba penguin daw. Uh, penguins do not hatch eggs. They have live mammals, live offsprings. Okay? So the first winner is, PJ Bayaborda, congratulations, you win. Another one is Noemi Echage, congratulations also. Also is Mon Saspa, congratulations. Okay, we have two more winners. John B, congratulations from LinkedIn, you also win a prize. Joe Melindo, also same answer as Monotremes, you get a prize. And the last one on LinkedIn is Jewelson. Again, kagakit for our wow. You guys, you you're my man. You're always killing the game. Congratulations as well. Okay. Um, for YouTube, we only have one winner so far. Okay, we're not good on YouTube, by the way. We don't have much viewers because I'm not as active there. But my winner is Oliver Alonzo on YouTube. Congratulations. Okay. Now. I have two more prizes to give away because we have two winners supposedly for YouTube. What am I going to do? I'm going to give the two extra prizes to our TikTok folks because you guys are you guys are giving us good love. I decided to just give more prizes for you guys. So let me choose two more winners on TikTok. The third winner is Leo Mar. Congratulations, Leo Mar. And the fourth winner is Ulap. Also, same answer as Monotremes. Congratulations. Please send me a DM. Please send me a private message. Now, for those who are on Facebook, LinkedIn, and also YouTube, how do you claim your prize? On your screen. This is for Facebook, huh? Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. You see that? Contest winners should claim their prize here. Please capture that. Enter the link so you can automatically claim your prize. Okay? 
the scrolling marquee is going to keep on moving. So please stay tuned for that. Okay, let's do our last batch of questions before we retire for the night. Okay, can I get some exclamation mark from our folks if you guys still have the energy? You guys are still good? I hope you're... I'm loving the conversation for tonight, by the way. So thank you for your questions. I always say this. I'm only as good as the questions thrown to me. So thank you because the questions are really enjoyable so far. Okay? Yes, shall we continue? Let's continue our love with our TikTok folks. So let's read a question again from TikTok here. <laughs> okay. Someone from TikTok says, I know someone who's a human but lays eggs. Is that an inside joke? Uh, or am I, is it a, I don't know, a quote from a movie? Oh, Kumiko is asking, do you have a podcast? Yes, we do. And we are now on season two. You can go to Spotify, write my name, Jonathan Yabut. And we've had more than 40 episodes already. It's all about career management as well. Okay. Jen Alito is asking from TikTok, will you be conducting an online session in the near future? We do have online courses right now. They are recorded. You can go to our website, jonathanyabut.com, and you can buy tickets to purchase access to that online course. We do not have online, um, we don't have live online sessions so far. All are recorded. The only live sessions that we have are on site. And our partner is SMX Convention Center. Okay. Whoops. My TikTok. Oh, there you go. Just need to fix that part. Okay. Question. Um, can I just answer some personal questions because I also miss this? Are you still in touch with the rest of the apprentice folks? Yes, we do have a WhatsApp group. Um, some folks have already given birth to their offsprings as well. Uh, usually our WhatsApp group becomes active when someone has a birthday. So, and someone just keeps on greeting each other. But not as tight as we were in the first three years. Um, first three years, we would still see each other personally. We would fly to another country and do some drinks. But I guess, you know, some people have already, you know, some people have graduated to have their own families. This year is actually our 10th year anniversary. So I should invite them for something special. Okay. Let's move on for some more questions. Trying to look. Okay. Someone says, do you sound like Luis Manzano? Yes. A lot of people tell me that. Do I do personal coaching? I do, but it comes at the price. And that is the reason why uh, I don't do it as often because it's not as efficient versus addressing instead a crowd or an audience. Ooh, okay, TikTok. Meg says this. I worked in HR and promotion was taken back. It was withdrawn due to budget. After I resigned, they opened and hired someone for it. I'm so sorry for that. Uh, obviously, a red flag. A good company will never do this. Promotions are not supposed to be withdrawn unless they think you're not worth it. If it's just an issue of a budget... Okay, here's the thing. In the labor code of the Philippines, unfortunately, number one, companies are not allowed to change your salary, especially if you've already signed on to a contract. Companies, however, are allowed to delay the salary or to lower the salary if there is mutual consent, especially when there was a discussion about financial constraints. In your case, I do not think that there was consent, obviously, and it's also weird that they opened the position again when you left. So I'm not, probably not seeing the bigger picture here. Perhaps there was conflict that happened. So 
But I'm with you, Meg. So whoever wrote this, Meg, I'm with you. This is not supposed to happen in a good company. And this should not be done to any individual at all. When you promote someone, it's as is. You should not be taking this back. Okay? Okay. Jewel Son from LinkedIn is asking, when it comes to giving credits, is it insulting if the boss only pensions your position instead of your name? I can understand how a very cunning boss will not mention your name just so that even if they will sound like they're crediting someone, the credit was not properly given. So I don't know what the intentions are, but this is a questionable intention. If you really want to credit someone for having done something amazing, you will mention their name. It's the least that you should do to make the person feel that they are recognized for what they've accomplished. Okay. Mon also says the same thing. I work as an employee engagement and well-being officer. Yes, promotions are not to be withdrawn. This is just me. Please don't call me out as someone who's judgmental, but promotions, whenever they are withdrawn or whenever they are not done because of budget, usually happen in smaller companies. Unfortunately, happens in business sets that are owned by families in which the CEO is also the owner, gets to dictate everything, and therefore no one challenges their decisions anymore. So this is why if you're a fresh graduate, and again, this is my bias because I came from that experience. If you are working for the first time, for me, the best experience to land as a job, as a fresh graduate, is a multinational company. Why is that? A multinational company has years and years and years of experience committing a lot of mistakes in the past to the point that they have corrected them by now. They're also... My, well-resourced. So likely they do have budgets for trainings. They have budget even for your coffee. They have budget for food. And this makes you a happier person at work. Also, multinational companies usually respect and champion diversity. So you're not going to be judged for your socioeconomic status, for your gender, for whatever it is. They will celebrate your uniqueness. So if you're gunning for an amazing experience, and safety of your experience, my bias, I'd go for a multinational company. You can go for a local company, but make sure it is a reputable, a very big one, for example. And this is just me again. You'll notice this as a pattern. If a company is on the stock market, it has more pressure from outsiders, and therefore, it is likely more innovative it's more agile. It is more open to opinions of others. It is open to change. It will not be your typical traditional company. Okay. Is addendum... Ooh, this is very controversial. Is addendum contract to stay in the company for a certain period legal in the PH? I don't think so. I'm not a lawyer, but... Your contract at the start of your working period should be what it is. Anything that's added to the contract is an excuse to make it look like it's legit, but basically they are breaching the contract. They just want to make you stay longer, even if you have all the rights to resign. So Marvi, if you're calling this out, I would suggest to get some legal advice if this is a serious issue, because you should not be adding Adding something in the contract is a flowery word for breaching contracts. Okay? Okay, TikTok again. How do you become an effective supervisor or manager without anyone guiding you except self-study and feeding? Can I rephrase this question? Is it possible that you can still be a good manager even if no one is guiding you? Technically, yes, but if you ask me, can you become the best version of a manager? I think the answer is no. Why is that? At the end of the day, when you become a manager, you need evaluation from someone 
who's looking from a third-party perspective. If you keep on studying on your own, you will keep on doing self-evaluation. And self-evaluation is dangerous. Why? You'll be biased towards yourself. You think you're good-looking, but in the eyes of others, you're not. Same thing also for leadership. You can start thinking you're the best leader because you're doing X, Y, and Z, but it's not at par with the standards of others. So if you want to become the best of the best as an effective supervisor, you need someone who can give you feedback on how you speak, how you talk, how do you manage conflict, how you negotiate. Okay? Okay. Someone was asking regarding the Saturday seminar schedules. Both were mentioned for the 2 to 5 p.m. Both the Friday and the Saturday sessions at SMX. The morning session is 9.30 to 12.30. The afternoon session is 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. If you'd like to get the schedules of our sessions, you can go to our website, jonathanyabut.com, and go to the section on talks. The calendar is there. You can also get tickets if you're interested. Okay. Team, I need to end the session now with one last question. And tomorrow is Thursday. Um, I don't want to promise anymore because I don't know if I'm going to be busy. But because this triggered me to be excited with more discussions again, I will find time to do a session with you guys, to do a live session with you tomorrow. Okay? Ooh, from Virgilio on Facebook, he says, Always ask for feedback. That's what our CFO is saying to us. Yes. Never hesitate. Do not be afraid for, to ask for feedback. It's always going to be for your own good. It's always good to know what others think of you. Because when you're in a bubble, remember, sometimes your ceiling is just someone else's floor. If you're the basketball MVP of your barangay, of your village, you can start thinking, wow, I'm the best of the best. Sure. But if you see people on, in NBA, in PBA, or FIBA, you might just be a small fish in a big pond because your benchmarks were wrong. So go beyond that. Okay? Okay, let's answer this question from a fresh grad. I want to help out folks. Uh, hello, says Bambi Gonzalez on Facebook. This is our last question, by the way. How long should I stay in a company in terms of tenure to gain more knowledge and skills? There's no hard and fast rule. I'd like to share, however, my philosophy. My philosophy. I am the type of person who believes in collect and select philosophy. Collect and select meaning while it is good to stay in one company for the rest of your career, because after the third or fourth year, things become more comfortable. It's okay to do that. I'm also the type who gets easily bored after three to four years if I'm doing the same projects and if I have the same set of people. So I'm the type where in after two to three years, if I think I've accomplished a lot of things, I will move on to a different company. Two to three years or three years is solid because one year is too premature. In one year, you might not be able to grasp enough exposure for you to say that you know the business. Okay? So three years would be a solid grasp. I will also say that I will have that mentality when I'm still young because I can afford to jump from one place to another. But I also think that when you grow older, in your 40s or 50s, you start settling down in a company that you think is going to be the last company until you retire. That's also one. For fresh graduates, I would strongly encourage you, if you can, Try to learn from one company every two to three years. Why is there also advantage to this? One of the fastest ways to increase your salary, and this is not a theory, it's proven, is to jump from one company to another every three to four years. You're bringing in a new set of perspectives. You're bringing in new people and networks, etc. Some people now might be provoked and say, John, are you telling me that job hopping is a good thing? And my answer is, Yes, if it is done at the right timing and at the right place. In today's modern times, three years is no longer a bad thing, especially when you have learned the business. And I want to share with you a very amazing study. So a study in Europe and America shows that when a recruiter looks at someone's resume and they notice that this person is jumping from one company to another 
every two to three or four years, they are not even discouraged or disappointed with the person. They even have this impression, wow, this guy is jumping from one company to another and all the companies are the reputable companies. This person must be really good. This person must be contacted by a headhunter almost every six months, which is a sign that it's a good employee. If that's the case, the HR will feel, then it's up to me to challenge myself. How can I make this person stay longer in the organization if we sign them up? That's the new impression of HR recruiters these days. So do not feel discouraged that people might think that you're a job hopper. Yes, I will still agree. There will still be some traditional HR folks who will think that if your resume has only two to three years per company, I don't want to gamble on you. I don't want to risk my position on you. So it depends. If you're looking at FMCG, Silicon Valley, or IT, these are industries wherein they do not discriminate if you only stay two to three years in a company. Because it's a very fast paced. What they're after is, if I get a person from a company X, and that company X was amazing, has a good reputation, I want to take this person because I want him to bring with me best practices from that company. Okay? So Bambi, if you're young, collect and select. This is not me saying that you should not stay in one company forever. If you're that type, go. If you're happy, I always say this, if you're already happy and there's no reason to change, then you don't need to burden yourself with additional stress. You can stay in the company for the long as long as you want. I have, I have a really good friend. Her name is Mabel. She works in the pharmaceutical industry. Her first job was in that company, and she's still in that same job, and she's now 38 years old. She's been in the company for 16 years now, and she's happy. So both ways can work. Okay? But again, this is just me. If you are young, go and take that risk. Take as many experience from many companies. It's collect and select, right? So there. Okay? Yes. Oh, Bambi said it's for her friend. Ayan na naman kayo eh. Para asking for a friend. <laughs> oh, okay, Bambi, I'll take your word for it. Okay? All right. Gladiators and suits. I have to end this session now because I haven't also eaten my dinner. I also haven't seen yet the last episode of Demon Slayer. I need to watch that tonight before I go to sleep. Thank you for joining me in this session. Okay, I will really commit. I'm really going to go live tomorrow because I want to give away prizes to our folks. Okay, I'm going to promise that. So please stay tuned. We're going to go live at 9 o'clock again on your same platforms. In the meantime, have some rest and catch you soon. Bye, guys.